end of a perfect day and no mistake. Anyone, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you change a one pound treasury note? I haven't a penny. Don't worry. You're going to have 239 of them in a minute. I've been robbed. What are you going to do about it? Write me out a check? Oh, dear. What can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can walk. It's not necessary, really. Allow me. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Oh, thank you. Hello. Is it raining you're in? I'll go down and see. ship for a cruiser? Yes, doesn't she? This is Shooting Star. Good, eh? Yeah. I once lost seven and six on a horse called Shooting Star in a hurdle race. More like Falling Star. Still, you may be lucky, sir. Haven't told the wife we're going yet. It'll be a surprise for her. She'll enjoy that. I bet she will. <laughs> All I get is a busman's holiday. And you know what that is. If there's one thing I know anything about, it's art. As my poor old mother used to say, Joe, you shouldn't be in the market. You should be in a museum. You said a mouthful. And she was right. <laughs> Believe me, she was right. I could pick out a Venus de Milo as soon as I saw one. I bet you can pick out a bargain. Pick it out? I can smell it. I'm a whippet. Sure. Whippet Joe, that's what they call me down at the market. In fact, my nose is my fortune. You're, You're telling, telling us. us. Wise guy. Drop this, miss. Oh, thank you. You won't forget to put me off at Linden Gardens, will you? No fear, miss. We mustn't keep Auntie waiting, must we? Any more fares, please? Look at that. I wonder what bit of bad luck's waiting for us around the corner. I don't fancy Hearst Park this afternoon, you know. Don't be a fathead. What do you think we're working this shift for? You'll lose your shirts. It might interest you to know that we may own this place by tomorrow, and you're the first that's sacked. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, and if our information proves correct, we shall pick up a parcel. Why, taking your lunch with you? <laughs> That's right. Show your ignorance of racing parlance. Oh, I like that. Parlance. That's a good word you used to him. I read, spread, I read. Uh, so I see. All right, Mr. Clever. As a matter of fact, I'm now in the middle of a work on the occult. That's funny. I had a brother who was an oculist. The occult is the study of the supernatural. You always was superstitious. And rightly so. My mother and father first met on a Friday the 13th on some sand dunes. Oh? Did they blame it onto the date or the dunes? What do you mean, blame? And on the day I was born, a cross-eyed man came to the front door. That accounts for a lot of things, that does. I'll ignore that thrust. Well, you can't blame the Oculus for everything. It was on a Friday the 13th that Steve won by a short head on Gay Crusader. You can't win the Blooming Derby on a Blooming Friday. It wasn't on a Blooming Friday, it was on Gay Crusader. Then what are you arguing about? I'm not arguing. Oh, oh yes, you are. No, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. <coughs> and you. you, Henry? Got staring sickness or something? Perhaps I have. You're worth staring at in that dressing gown. Yes, it is rather nice, isn't it? I suppose you think I never notice anything. Mm. What do you mean? Oh, that dressing gown and various other things I could mention. What? Oh, I'm not going to say what they are now. Well, back to the old desk. See it, supper, dear. <laughs> so long, Bonzo. Of all the markets I love best, there's none to beat the Kelly. Of all the markets I love best, there's Where did you pinch the car, Joe? There's a nice thing to say to me. Where did you pinch it? You shouldn't say that. Besides, it ain't grammar. What you should have said is, where did you knock it off? And I'd have to it away. Now, don't do that. There's a good fellow. That's not going to cause a bit of bother, you understand? Always remember one thing in its place. Now, I tell you where I got the car. You've heard of Al Capone's car? Yeah. The one with the bulletproof windows? Yeah. And the machine gun inside? Yeah. Well, this ain't a bit like it. Now, come up here and I'll tell you some more. I bought this car from a friend of mine. I gave him three pounds for it. And if I'm going to have any bother with it, he's going to have a job to get the other two pounds fifteen. Now, don't mess that about. There's a good fellow. Put it away. We'll get you something to play with later on. Tell me, what do you think of the cat's dinners? Cat's dinners? Lights, lights. Don't be a mug all your life. Do you like the lady's hat? Hat? Bonnet. Bonnet. Give us a hand up with this table. Be careful now. Go steady. Go steady. Will you? you see what you've done? You want to be very careful. You want to be careful with a thing like that. Now, if you'd have broken that glass, you'd have had seven years' bad luck. Always remember, if you break a mirror, seven years' bad luck. Be careful with it. Never break it. Joe, I sometimes wonder where you get hold of these here bargains. What you take to the Kelly every Friday. Looks fishy to me. You trying to make it on a crook? You're talking to one of the widest boys ever walked in a pair of shoes. I might be flat-footed, but I've got broad shoulders and a clean mind. Come down here. And I always remember my mother's words. She used to say to me, Joe, honesty is the best poverty. And she knew what she was talking about because she never lied. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get away because I don't want to stand here all the morning. Goodbye. And I wish all you wish yourself. Well, what time does the market open? Yeah. They open at 10 o'clock, but you don't want to bother. You'll never get there with that. I don't think I'm going to get there with this. What's this for? I don't know. Don't bother me. There's a good fellow. I've got enough bother here. Throw it away. Throw it away. Why don't you let the donkey tow it for you? I think that's a good idea. Let the donkey tow it. But don't go too fast for the first 500 miles. I want to run this car in slowly. Don't do that. Don't scratch the paint. What's the matter with you? You got any sense? You want to make it look shabby?
Flora, where's the marmalade? Martha, where's the marmalade? I told you we were out, Mum, and asked you to order some yesterday. I'm sorry, dear, I must have forgotten to order the marmalade. Forget. Forget. It's all you can do. If it weren't for me, I'd like to know where you'd end. In the bankruptcy court, dear. Yes, and then you forget to turn up. I don't want to brag, Mary, but promotion in a bank does mean something. Well, you've stuck at it for three years, working like a nigger. Thank I do admire you. I'd like to give you a big hug. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> Mary, do you like being a typist? Piccadilly Circus. He won't swallow it, dear. Come on, it's a very nice little pill. Oh, dear. I'm sure he doesn't like me. Give him to me. You get more selfish and cruel every day. Yes, dear. Ah. Oh, come along, Toto, darling. What has a nasty big bogeyman been doing to you? What are you standing there for, Ralph? You're late. Yes, dear. Well... Pook, <laughs> your, your mistress wants you to go for a toddle. Millie, why will you keep on calling me sir? Well, all those little boys do. You're in one of your irritating moods this morning. Oh, it's only a gag. I've got a million of them. Hatcha, hatcha. Gag? Oh, you know, joke. Or don't you know what that means either? Of course I do. I've got a pretty good sense of humor. At least I always thought so. Rather prided myself on it. Hmm. Hmm. False pride, I call that. How's your homework getting on? Fine. I think I can order a meal in Italian now. Really? Hmm. More than I could. I wish I could better myself a bit. Oh, why don't you? Now, how could I find time to study when I'm glorifying British variety from lunchtime till midnight, eh? Take a grammar book to the theatre, I suppose, and learn a couple of verbs while I'm changing the knickers. Shh. Blow your voice, there's a dear little boys will hear. Now, that's a word that never fails to amuse them. It wouldn't amuse them if they had to change the blessed things eight times a day. Millie, you realize why I'm spotting French and Italian, don't you? No. To take you to Paris and to Naples on our honeymoon, of course. You're a dear. I tease you a lot, but I love you a lot, too. Did you know that? I like to hear you say that. <laughs> then, no more dancing your toes off, eh? Oh, but I like dancing, Horace. In moderation, anyway. Yes, but you're going to give up the stage when we're married. I thought we'd settled all that. You have, but I haven't. Suppose I asked you to give up teaching after all your studying for it. It's not the same thing at all. Darling, it is. Headmaster says there's a lot of noise in your room. Would you kindly give them some verbs to repeat or something when you have to leave the room? Hold on this hand, Johnny, else the policeman will arrest you. And then where will you be? In jail. Oh, look, Auntie. Yeah, but don't point. Auntie, is this London Station? Yes, dear, they call it King's Cross. 
Now, I wonder where there's a man who can tell me... What George or King Edward who was cross, Auntie? I don't know, dear. Oh, Porter. I think you mean the inspector, madam. Oh, yes. My name's Miss Twig. Now, can you tell me what time's the last day excursion train to Lincoln? Twelve ten midnight. Oh, thank you very much. Now, come along, Johnny. Now, the first thing we're going to see is the Tower of London. That's the place where everybody was beheaded, you remember? It was built by William the Quarter. What's it like, Joe? Well, the roaring enclosure's fully full. There's nobody in the two bob ring. is filling up a bit. Here. Yeah. Where'd you get the old sword from, Joe? Well, as a matter of fact, I bought it from the Argo half can. How much you get for it? What's that, Nosey? I might have given 25 pounds for what I might. Not bad, is it? Self-starter and all. Look, Joe, he's here again. Who? Oh, that's Joe Wheeler. Pretty, isn't it? It was missed from an auction sale down at St. Ormond's last Wednesday. And there were several um, dealers there. Of course, I know I've no right to question these frank, open faces I see around me. But I mustn't shirk my duty. Well, he's got nothing on me. He doesn't upset me. I wish my conscience was as clear as yours. Conscience, that's right. That was the pride of my dear old mother. She said to me, Joe, the first I was born, I said, what, Mum? She said, you've got a conscience, and she knew. Hello, Joe. Hello, chum. Have you got anything interesting in your stuff today? Well, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a whatnot, that's what I've got. You can have it for a couple of bob. It's got a leg missing. You can have it for 18 pence. I'll tell you what, buy a cradle and then go home and ask your wife if you've got any children. I'm not looking for valuables, I'm looking for rubbish. Bill, put a waterproof sheet over that donkey. Mm. Junk, you know, old vases and statues, bronzes, rubbish like that. I oh, know, yeah, well, I wish you luck. I've got the very line you're looking for. 36, am I right? And always remember, lady, if you've got no stockings on, you won't have to pull them up. Now, my first lock today will be a pair of trousers. Worn by the Duke of Patchen, made by one of the finest tailors in London, every button hand sewn, what can't speak can't lie, shown the tape outside, one price and one price only. Who'll give me 25 shillings for them? Give it two bob for them. You give me two bob for them. Oh, it's only a shilling a leg. The buttons cost me more than that. I want these trousers to go up, not come down. If my chauffeur was here, I'd make him drive me home. I'd never been so insulted in all my life. I stood in this market pitch for ten years, allowed people to turn my stock over. What are you doing? Turning the stock over. And you stand there and offer me two shillings. You know what I've a good mind to do with you? I've a good mind to... I'll take your two, Bob. Give me your two, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you fancy that? Make me an offer, boy. I've been trying to pin you down for months. And I think I've done it at last. <laughs> Joe, you were in that sale room when this valuable statue disappeared. I'll nab you yet. My poor old mother used to say to me, Joe, go straight and you'll have the world at your feet. And she was right. They're here. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. I want the best bunch of flowers you've got in the shop. Oh, may I ask the occasion? Oh, yes, well, it's the uh, anniversary of my wedding day. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. And what flowers does your wife like? Oh, well, joke is I haven't asked her, on purpose. And I'm sure she thinks I've forgotten it's today. <laughs> Quite, yes. <laughs> uh, carnations are very a la mode, you know. How are they? Oh, I tell you what, I'm expecting some roses in about five o'clock. Exactly like these are. Oh, those would be fine. Uh, how much would a dozen of those cost? Uh, ten shillings. Well, would you have them got ready for me and I'll call on my way home? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. I'm sure he suspects. What makes you think so? Well, he, he kept looking at me during breakfast and asked me if I thought he didn't notice things. I'm sure he knows. Oh. Well, perhaps I'd better clear out of town until things blow over. Things won't blow over, Max. Oh, don't be silly. I've got to go with you. Now, listen. I'm frightened, Max. I've got to go with you. Two weeks on Tuesday. 
Mr. and Mrs. Henry Jackson will be leaving England for a short cruise in the Mediterranean. Short because Mr. Jackson can't afford a long one. Cool, I bet your wife's tickled to death. Aha, uh -huh, that's a surprise. She doesn't know yet. <laughs> I've been saving up two years for this. Two years I've been filling in cruises for other people, and here I am filling in my own. What do you think of that, eh? Lucky <laughs> devil. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's too bad. Well, uh, I if I may be allowed to replace the article, uh, articles, uh, if you'll be good enough uh, to tell me the size. <laughs> oh, no, really. I couldn't permit you. <laughs> bad dog. Size nine. Oh, uh, size nine. Pook, pook, do give me a break. Oh, size nine. Well, what address or where shall I... Uh... Oh, my... I mean, I usually take the air here. Oh, well, I hope to be able to refund your loss uh, this afternoon. Uh, well, uh, Pook and I must be uh, uh, strolling along. Oh, no, nothing doing. How about? I haven't got a heart. Persecution, that's what it is. Persecution. Good morning. I might as well tell you straight away that I'm not here looking for a job. <laughs> oh, no, sir. After all, I don't have to look twice at my visitors to find out which class they belong to. Oh. Will you come this way, sir? Thank you very much. <laughs> no, what I'm really here for is to make inquiries about a cousin of mine who took, um, well, uh, took a wrong step, you know, sowing his wild oats and all that poor old Frank. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, he wouldn't give his mother his whereabouts, you see, and so she's been rather worrying over it and worrying her eyes out, as a matter of fact. Uh, well, it's strictly against the rules, you know. I'm very sorry. Very sorry for the old lady, so I think we might make an exception this time. What did you say your cousin's name was? That's marvellous of you. Frank Parsons, Pentonville uh, Prison. Hmm. Frank Parsons. Parsons was at Pentonville. Sounds like a public school, doesn't it? I beg your pardon? Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hmm. Pennyford. Pennyford. Parsons, Parsons. David Parsons. Francis. Francis. Francis B. Parsons. Ah, there we are. Ah. I think I've got good news for the old lady, sir. Really? He's a clerk in the Southwest Commercial Bank. Has been for three years. No. A bank clerk? Yes, first we've ever had. I seem to remember a relative of his who pulled some wires. That'd be Uncle Alec, yes. Well, that is sporting of you. No, if I may say so, sir, it's sporting of you. Why? Well, taking an interest in a man who's blotted the family's scutcheon, so to speak. <laughs> Not at all. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Chocks. I say Steve won the derby five times. Six, five, six, five. I challenge that. All right. Pomer in 1915. Yes. Gay Crusader 1917. Yes. Humorist 1921. Yes. Potter T. Oh. Potter T. He won the Caesar, which in 21. I know what I'm talking. Oh, I see. A slight error. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is no need to be funny about it. Well, I'll be mother. That's all right. Not too strong for me. Now, when Teapot won the season... Oh, look what you've done now. Here, yeah. steady on. Well, I'll come I remember when, uh, when the Caesar which was won by Teapot, because my aunt had just had her second. And Will you not cross those knives? Oh, you are touchy. Now, listen. We've got to play safe this afternoon. Uh, strategy. Strategy. He ain't running. Now, I mean we must be strategic. Oh, I see. We'll go easy on the first. Mm -hmm. Any to come, all on Steve's mount in the second. Yes. Any to come, plunge on the third. Oh. And this is where we plunge. I've got a horse. Don't tell me. We can't lose. That's right. I guessed it. Now, I know a cook, but had a follower who used to be a jockey. 
But her cooking was so good, he got too heavy and couldn't ride. Now, he says mix grill, and his tips never fail. This'll be the exception that proves the rule. Uh, you always were a pacifist. Here, do you want to get me into trouble? Who's pouring out this tea? Remember, I'm a bachelor. Well, I started, didn't I? I was mother. Oh, well, my wife don't hold with that theory. Now, I think we ought to have one of these six mini tips of alls. Ladies and girls, we'll take the opening chorus. And make it snappy, see? All right, let's go. One, two. Two till night, nearly at night. Here we pop over the top. Non-stop variety girls. Whatever any impropriety girls. Not like society girls. Come on, kid. Whenever a variety agent asks me if he can come and watch a rehearsal, I always smell a rat. What do you mean? Ah, uh, come off it. Which one of them you've got to try and get off my payroll this time? Oh, stow that, my dear chef. I wouldn't dream of it. No, I know you wouldn't. But you do just the same. Come on, girls. Give me something. Smile. All right, girls, take it easy. No, 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 you kids. I'm going to get you all out of here as quick as I can. Oh, oh no. No. Morning, sweetheart. Morning, light of my life. Oh, you know, you're a kid in a million. Oh, what original things you think of to say. Well, you've certainly got the uh, best pair of legs in the theater. Well, what are you going to do about it? Make me a dame or something? No, I'm going to make you a star. Oh, mister. You wouldn't fool me, would you? No, I'm on the straight, no kidding about this. Besides, I'm looking for a girl to join the English troupe at the Casino de Paris. Paris? Uh huh. And you just about fill the bill. And there's a, uh, a solo in the first part, too. Oh? Well, why not come back and have a little bit of supper with me tonight and let's talk it over? It takes me all my time to crawl home without going out to supper. Well, don't let's worry about going out. Come back to the flat and have some supper, and I'll, uh, I'll play some records to you. Thanks. I've got a portable of my own. Oh, come and have a bit of supper. Oh. Why not? My mother said I never should. Bye. Yes. Yes, Wakefield speaking. Is that you, Zimmerman? Listen, old man. I wouldn't do this for any other man in the city. You know that. But you did get my missus into the Royal Garden Party. <laughs> I'm not likely to forget a thing like that. Listen now. I've just opened a cable. I got it here on my desk now, old man. Red hot information. Yes? You can buy Fizak oil shares and buy heavily. Yes, yes, yes. Fizak government has given its okay about the concession. Things going through at this very minute. Get my brokers on the phone at once. Yes, yes, yes. There's no question about the rise, but for the love of Mike, keep it under your hat. If it gets out, the shares will pop up like a balloon and balloon. And don't breathe a word, even to the girlfriend. Goodbye. Pardon? Put me through to Mr. Cranheimer himself, will you? Mr. Wakefield speaking. That's all right, Mr. Lee. Privilege of an old friend. Not butting in, am I, Wakefield? No, 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 no. Heard the latest about the police woman of the Serpentine? No. Well, there was a Scotsman, an Irishman, and a Welshman. And the Scotsman goes up to the police woman and says, Poots the war, my bonny wee lassie. Of course, sir. Uh, they can't quite get the accent. No. Oh, excuse me, Hamilton. I'm on the phone. Oh? Something doing on the market? Oh, no, no, no. No, very slack today. Oh, I see. Doing a spot of phoning. Yes. All right, carry on, old boy. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'll ring you back in a few minutes. What? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Not in the least important, thank you. No, no. Goodbye. <laughs> ring up later. <laughs> sure, she love him. <laughs> you slay old devil. <laughs> Yes. Well, talking of Shashi well. Lapin, what's the difference between a taxi passing a girl's school and an old Excuse gentleman... Me, just a minute. Oh, thank you, Miss Lane. Now, get those people on the phone for me. You know, I've always admired that girl. 
Not a bad little chassis, what? Eh? No. Excuse me, Hamilton. Hello. Oh, that you, Kleinheimer? Now listen, I want you to... <laughs> I say, Wakers, old boy. I quite forgot to tell you the very latest one. It's about a bald-headed man who went to his doctor. Uh, uh, I'll be with you in a couple of seconds, old man. Carry on, old boy, don't mind me. A bit of a sticker, eh? You know, I always maintain... I'll ring you later. Somebody creating a spot of bubble. Say, Wickers, it's not really serious. What? I mean, she's not likely to go to the wave. Ah, what are you up to now? Norman, I'm ashamed of you wasting your time. My dear Mrs. Wakefield. Laura, what does this mean? I haven't any money. I gave you five pounds this morning. I know, dear, but I left it in my other bag at home. Oh, really, Flora? You're enough to drive a man to drink, upon me, so you are. I gave you five pounds and I left home this morning. Uh, those people are on the phone again, Mr. Wakefield. Oh, tell them... Uh, uh, very good, sir. Uh, yeah. Oh, upon oh, me, so anybody would think I was made of money. Friday, 2.30. Must have TB. Norman, dear, you haven't got consumption. Yeah? Oh, no, dear. No, no, no. TB? Turkish bath. Oh, oh hang it. Now I shan't be able to go. I see. But you can't cut the TB. I mean, it's good for our putting. <laughs> Very well. Very well. Well, yeah, there's a cheque for ten pounds for you. Ten pounds, Norman? Yes, dear. And I want you to deliver this letter personally to this address. It's in the same street as the bank. Message? Just deliver the letter, dear. It's very important. Very important indeed. You can trust me, Norman, dear. Goodbye, Mr. Briggs. See you at bridge tonight. Now, don't be late for dinner, dear. No, dear, no, no, no. Well, come on, old fruit. Lunch. And then the old TB. I hope I haven't interfered with your money's work. Oh, no. My next lot will be a small box, unseen and unsighted. I shall start at the low price of a shilling. If anybody bids me two shillings and I get no further bid, no bidder becomes a buyer. Now, what will you start at? Six. Sixpence. A bob. A bob. One and six. One and six. Half a crown. Half a crown. Don't bother about the money, lad. It's quite all right. Take that. I'll make you a present of that. Send your old clothes on to the wife. That's right. What's that? That's Big Ben. Huh? Matter of fact, it's a watcher. Wine's like a ball of silk. You can drop it in a bucket of water. We'll not interfere with the workings of this watch. A watch like that could be marked up in any shop for four pounds ten. If I sold that to any member of my audience today, that man being my father, I could go home and sleep the sleep of the just knowing full well I've given him value for money. I'm not asking four pounds ten, four pounds or three pounds. One price and one price only as far as they go. I've only got a gross left. A pound. Would you bid me a pound for that, sir? All right, I'll take a chance. That's what I like, a sportsman. That's right, sir. Now, you've bid me a pound for that watch, sir. That shows that watch is worth a pound, am I right? Sure. Right, sir. If that watch is worth a pound, that watch must be worth a pound. Yeah. Do me a favor, sir. Bid me two pounds for the loss. No, it's, I'm sorry, sir. Not you. I'm very sorry. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll blow the works. That's what I want, sir. I just want to gain your confidence. And I'll make you one of my talking and walking advertisers. And I'll do the same for you, sir. I'll treat you the same as I treated your friend. I see what sort of a sport you are. Would you give me 18 shillings for a pound? Sure, I would. You will? Sure. Give me your 18 shillings. Take it out of the pound. Wise guy. Tell me, would you be interested in that, sir? No. As a matter of fact, we're antique dealers from New York. We're looking for something special. Then I think I've got what you're looking for. What is it? I couldn't tell you that. When can we see it? When can you see it? Yeah. Meet me tonight at half past 11 at the Piccadilly Tube Station. I have the very thing you're looking for. Piccadilly Tube Station? Yes, half past 11, number three exit. OK. Don't forget, boys. It's a bet. It's a bet. Wise, guys. My next lot will be a pair of ladies' silks. They're so small, you can get them in your handbag. Don't run away, ladies. They're only stockings. I never make a mistake. Well, it worked, Chief. We've got to meet him at 11.30 at the Piccadilly Tube Station. He's got something up his sleeve. And I've got a feeling that that something is a valuable statue that I'm after. 
And I've got a feeling that this is going to be Slippery Joe's unlucky day. <laughs> I'll meet you boys tonight. <laughs> This place is awfully noisy, isn't it? Well, it isn't exactly an undertaker, Carla. This place will take you out of yourself. Hello, Dickie. How are you? Hello, Dickie. Hello, Dickie. You seem to know all the men here. Of course I do. Everybody here's on the stage. Hello, Amy. How's your boyfriend? He's hot. How's yours? Well, I must get back to my boys. What for? Natural history. Oh, stay and have some coffee. You'll learn more natural history here than you'll ever be able to teach your boys. Yes, that's just what I don't like about the place. Oh. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, life of my life. Oh, Mr. Dawes, Mr. Nichols. Pleased to meet you. In the business? Business? Uh, on the stage. No, I'm in the uh, teaching. He's a professor. Mm. Ah, well, now look here, kid. You think over that contract and look after your tap dancing. Your face is okay, but it's your legs will carry you furthest. They'll carry her just as far as I want them to and no further, Mr. Nichols. Hardy. Oh, see you later. That's Tawny. Tawny? Spoils my chances, you silly old pilgrim father. Do you realize that man offered me a job at the Casino de Paris? Oh, where's that? Paris, of course. Where did you think it was? Ashby de Mazouche? Well, you're not going. Did I hear you say I can't go? Yes, you did. Paris, of all places. Well, what's wrong with Paris? You were going to take me there? Oh, that's different. We'd have gone to the Louvre and places like that. Seen Napoleon's tomb, I suppose. Another daring outing. It's perfectly obvious what that fellow wants to take you to Paris for. My dear Horace B, SB. I'm not a BSC. Well, or SBP, or whatever you are. It's about time you realize I can take care of myself. Do you know I've slapped more gentlemen's faces than any other chorus girl in the West End, and I shall continue to do so ad lib. This happens to be a job of work, and I'm keen on it. If you're going to marry me, you've got to settle down and not go gallivanting all over the continent, kicking your legs in the air and being chased by a lot of dirty old men. Oh, if we weren't in public, I'd add one more to my collection and slap your face. Perhaps you won't get a chance. Not if I have to marry you to get it, I won't. You're a nasty, narrow-minded, pre-war old bookworm. And I'd sooner scrub floors than be married to you for life. Goodbye. Whatever may have been the cause of the present depression, nothing but the restoration of confidence will bring back economic prosperity to the world. I was on the point of asking you something this morning. I knew. Uh, How did you know? The girl always knows, silly. Speak up. We can't quite hear. Sorry. Continuing our talks on feathered family life, we now visit the nightingale in mating time. I'm worth four pound ten a week now. No. Yes. And I've saved up two hundred pounds in three years. No. Yes. You must have worked jolly hard. I work harder still if you marry me. This peep at feather domesticity shows that two grown-up birds who have mated experience increasing difficulty in finding food for so many baby mouths. Should we get out? Excuse me. Oh, thank you so much. Not at all. Oh, it's got all my money in. I am grateful to you. Yes, thanks very much. Not at all. It's a pleasure. <laughs> very interesting program, wasn't it? Especially the part about the princess thing and magic reviewing the girl guys. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I couldn't help overhearing the last part of your conversation in there. Would you think it awfully rude of me if I congratulated you? Well, it's very nice of you. Look here. My name's Blake. William Blake. Oh, my name's Parton. Elizabeth Summers, my, uh... Fiancé. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now, I know this is frightfully unconventional of me and all that, but I do think you ought to celebrate this, you know. Will you come and have a cocktail with me at six in, in the Regent Palace? Will you? Frank, we ought to celebrate today of all days. Of course you ought. Yes, Mr. Blake, we'd love to come. Love to. to. That's fine. Oh, I'll be a little late, I'm afraid. Banks close earlier than offices. Oh, well, uh, you come at six then, Parsons, will you? Sure. Don't you be tiddly when I arrive there. Oh, no, of course not. We'll see you at six then. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. What a nice chat. <laughs> Charming. I, I beg your pardon. And what is your pleasure, sir? But I want a pair of silk stockings. Lady silk stockings for the gentleman, please. Oh, thank you. Nice of you to turn up, my dear. Uh, thank you. Ooh, are those my stockings? Oh, Fred, are you remembering? Ooh, ever so dinky posh. I can't wait to put them on. Good dog, good dog. So nice of you to buy me those lovely stockings. Here, hold these. Now, don't look naughty. That's the finish. Go on. Tell me what the numbers are. I don't Just put it in my pocket, will you? Oh, live is second. What can you expect? But anyway, look at the date, Friday the 13th. Well, you can't blame Donnie for that. He's won the Derby five times. Four times. Five, I'm telling you. Four times. And now... Oh, yes, you... We said uh, a chance but... here. Blimey, will it be sustained? I don't know. Oh, uh, what about your tips now? Well, what about them? I thought we were going to wrap up a packet. Well, these standard tips have never thrown out before. Didn't I say get a shilling one? I can't help that. We've got uh, a better one each day. Do you mind? Did you bring him along? Tips sustained! What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Who said Friday the 13th was unlucky? You did. You did. You've been harping on it all day. Who's been harping? You have. Now, where's the ticket? You got it. I gave it to you. Oh, now, don't be silly. Don't be a great perk. You've got it somewhere. Who's a great perk? Here, where is it? Give it off. I've got it. Come on. Come on. I've been thinking a lot about that girl who phoned you up this morning. Oh, Lord. Still, old boy, it's a bit thick. See, Wiggis, old boy, once a girl like that sees that you realize that you've made a mistake... I'm not the sort of man that makes mistakes. Still, old boy, it's a bit hot. Oh! I suppose you're feeling a bit bucked with yourself today, eh? Well, I think you'll find I have every reason to be. A word in your ear, old boy. Don't let this girl get wind of it. <laughs> well, I don't want to damp your enthusiasm. Oh, oh hi, Major. Wiggers, you know Major Henderson Lowe? You must have met on board meetings. Of course! <laughs> I didn't recognize you at, at first. Yes. Of course. How, How are, are you? you? I'm very well, thanks. Oh, you're oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, not too cold, Lowe. Step into me this afternoon, please. Ah. You should come along to my showrooms. I've got some nice new Rolls Royces. Well, he can afford one now. Oh, yes. He just pulled off a big deal in the city. Well, I don't know. Well, what about the colour? What do you think of a nice grey? 
Plum color's very fashionable. Well, I'm rather partial to navy blue myself. Plum color's a bit loud. Oh! 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 Hey. oh. 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 Thank you. Put mine down there, George. Yeah, thank you. Nice and comfy now, what? Mm. Rather. Hello. City sensation. Oh? Big drop in Pisa Gold shares. What? There was a sensational drop this afternoon in Pisa Gold shares. Official denial issued from the Pisa legation of the rumor which has been prevalent in city circles that the Pisa government would grant a concession. Many gullible city gamblers have had their fingers badly burnt. Now, there's just the sort of damn fool thing that I'd have put my money into. You know, I'm a perfect arse in these things. I only wish I had your business sense, Wickers. Now listen, dear. This is very important. Uh, don't be afraid to tell me the truth. Yes, dear. Did you deliver that note this morning? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, dear. Well, did you deliver it? Why, of course I did, dear. I'd never forget a thing like that. Oh. You sound relieved, dear. Yes, I am. Goodbye. Uh, get me a taxi, will you please? Yes, madam. Can't go through. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, light of my life. Four oh, last five minutes, Grace. I tell you, I'm Miss Adams' fiance. I don't care if you're a grandfather. Oh, God. Mr. Bronson. Don't take your arm away, I'll knock you down. Oh, non-stop all in wrestling, eh? Oh, how it's unsurprising. I'm not talking to you, I don't think it's much use. But as for you, I don't... Stop. What's all this going on during the snake dance? You go and get ready for Earth Go on. Who are you? I came here to see this young lady. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I, I know you did. Don't want to understand what I... Dear yeah, Jackson, we've got to do these before we leave. Before we leave? Yes, but this will take all night, won't it? Mm. It's a rush owing to sailing being postponed until tomorrow. Funny how superstitious some people are. Superstitious? What do you mean, superstitious? Look. Oh, yes, of course. Damn. Yes, they're all ready. Precious paint. Well, look, I'm, I'm working late. I'm afraid it's rather difficult. Oh. Uh, Mr. Jackson, shall I send them round to your wife? Oh, no, 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 don't do that, because I, I do want to give them to her myself. I tell you what, you give her in my side door any time before midnight. I'll have them ready for you, all right? Oh, yes, that's grand. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yes. Uh, miss, put these roses over there and put a hasperin in the water, will you? We'll put this card with them.
now. It's Henry. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, working late. Oh, I am disappointed. But, darling, you didn't really think I'd forgotten this morning, did you? Forgotten? Forgotten what? Well, the anniversary. What anniversary? Well, our wedding, five years today. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, I did think you forgot. Yes, I was a little hurt. Oh, well, look here, darling. I'll give you a ring just as I'm leaving the office, see? Yes, yes, all right, dear. Goodbye. Bye, darling. Well? Come on, let's get out of this. If he finds you here with me, he'll do me in. Well, come on, Duck. Let's leave his dog for him. Hurry up. Oh, that's all right. I can't have him running down the street after me. Have you got everything? Yes, well, I'll leave the letter. There, now I'm ready. Come on. This is a very lucky day for you financially, too, isn't it? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I see I must be more careful about raising my voice in the cinema. Exactly. <laughs> Lord, I wish I had 200 pounds in the bank. Oh, but haven't you? No. <laughs> well, I mean, champagne and all that. Oh, that's only the scale of living I'm used to. You see, when a chap's an old Etonian, well, you can't very well let yourself down, can you? Oh, you was eaten? Yes, yes. The pater insisted on it. I was in Pendleton's house, as a matter of fact. Jolly good if house. If I Pendleton. were you, I should go straight home and change my tie. <laughs> he was never at Eton, you know. <laughs> well, cheerio. Cheerio. Blake. Yes? Were you at Eton? Well, as a matter of fact, for a time, I was... I was at your school. At my school? Yes. What, do you mean, Stowe? No, not exactly Stowe. It's a school with... with no prize day, but with quite a lot of discipline. With no dormitories, but with quite a number of little cubicles, very simply furnished. With no playing fields, but with very high walls. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Haven't you? Well, here we are, two old boys who have forgotten to put on the old school tie. Disloyal of us, don't you think? <laughs> oh, waiter, bring us some more champagne. Will you make it vintage champagne this time? The last tasted like a gargle. What was I saying? You've been following me about all day. Yes. I'm awfully active. Well? I have got to have 100 pounds. But can't, can't you go to someone who's got less to lose than I have? I've tried everything. As a matter of fact, Frank, old boy, you know, between you and me, I'm pretty desperate. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Ah, oh, here please. we are. How are you? Sit down there. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. <laughs> Why? You are, Tidley. Never mind, it's a celebration day, then. Ah, here we are. Do you know, Miss Summers, that Frank and I have just discovered we were both at the same school? No, yes. really? Yes. Well, Frank's always been a bit mysterious about himself to me. <laughs> now you'll be able to tell me all his guilty parts. Exactly. <laughs> Won't he be useful, Frank? I... But... What's the matter with him? I don't know. He's ill. I'm so sorry, Mr. Blake, but I must catch That's him. Quite. So you have got back? Yes, I got back all right. What sort of day have you had? I've had a wonderful day. I sold the ottoman that's been hanging around my neck for the last three years, and I've sold the car bill. What? Yes, I sold the car. You never have. As true as I'm going up these stairs, and I don't lie, no, I never put these skates on again. I've sold the car. Who to? A commercial traveller? No, the rag and bone man. What did he give you for it? He gave me a cigarette for it, a black cat. them two blokes what she was talking to? Oh, they're two American fellas. I'm going to do business with them. I've got to meet them tonight, half past eleven, down at Piccadilly Cube station. Oh, what do they want? Oh, I know what they want. I think I've got what they want. What's that? A pair of kippers. What do you think it was? A tin of milk? This is a collar. Don't be a mug all your life. There'll be a lot of dollar bills flying about tonight. Whoopee! Not 
going out, are you, Millie? I'll be back in 20 minutes. <laughs> Don't be late for Ruth, but I wouldn't miss it for worlds. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Hello. Busy? Well, I'm more interesting than a lot of addition and subtraction, aren't I? Aren't I? Oh, still peeved. No, I'm just resigned, that's all. Oh, what are you resigned about? Not seeing any more of you. Oh, you don't sound very upset at the idea. Oh, what's the use of being upset? You obviously think I'm too dreary and staid for you. I don't really. It's only my wisecracking. Your what? You know, the way I pull your leg. I suppose the way you were letting that agent maul you about, that was pulling my leg too. I wasn't letting him maul me about. Depends what you mean by mauling. I saw he was and you were encouraging him. I wasn't. You've got to be nice to those fellows or they make it hot for you in your job. Yes, that's just the point. Your job's more important to you than I am. Either your job's got to go or I have. It might just as well be me. Oh, you silly old Puritan, you. I don't suppose you'll find that agent fellow a Puritan, so you'll have a really good time out of him. And you'll be able to get jobs out of him at the same time, so it's no good pretending to me you don't like being more. Oh, Horace, this is too silly. You know we're crazy about each other. And if we fight like cats and dogs now, what's married life going to be like? There isn't going to be any married life. Not while you go about with half your clothes on and let fellows like that Nichols make love to you. Darling, we'll both have cooled down by tonight. So, please meet me at the stage door tonight after the show. Same as usual. Do, dear. I'm sorry if I've done wrong. If I see you at the stage door, I'll know everything's okay. You're having a hard evening's work, Mrs. Wakefield. I don't think you've been dummy yet. Uh, no. An old Wakers looks as if his stomach had turned upside down. What's the matter, Wakers, old carrot? I'm fine. Mr. Wakefield's certainly playing rather an absent-minded game this evening. Uh, <coughs> yes. Anybody uh, seen the bridge problem in the paper tonight? I thought it was rather good. I've never missed one yet. By the way, where are the evening papers lodged? The master put them on the kitchen fire, madam. That was a funny thing to do. You're not feeling ill, are you, dear? I tell you, I'm fine. Well, all I can say is, wake his old top. That is a bridge player, your stock is well below par. <laughs> your call, Mr. Briggs. Uh, <coughs> one speed. Two hearts. Two spades. A four hearts. Uh, oh, double four hearts. <laughs> Content. Content. Hearts are trumps. And I'm dummy at last. But Mrs. Wakefield, you haven't a heart in your hand. Good God. Oh, what a stupid of me. But then I always am stupid. I must go and look after the sandwiches. <laughs> Sorry. Is that Mr. Kranheimer's house? Mr. Kranheimer, the stockbroker? Uh, oh, when will he be back? It's terribly important, you see. I got a note for him and got to his office this afternoon after it closed. Gone to the theatre. Will he be back to supper? He will. Oh, uh, yes, well, I, I don't quite know what to do. 
I'll call round a bit later. Uh, uh, yes, that's all right, darling. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. I think you'll come down, dear. Miss Bright's furious at your playing so badly. Oh. Oh. How stupid of her. It's only a game. You seem very flurried tonight, dear. You've forgotten something again. Oh, no. Oh, well, let's get back and finish the rubber. Come on, dear. It's terribly important, my girl, but I won't have such goings-on in my house. I won't. Let me pass, you silly, bad minded woman. What is it, Frank? Is it another girl? Mary, I... I've been to prison. Yes? I got a year for embezzlement. I thought it'd make life so much easier for me. My brother was ill, I did it for him too. That's all right. Mary. This fellow Blake wants money. I can't believe it. it seems so charming. How very nice to see you again. I didn't realize that you'd both, uh, shall we say, anticipated the ceremony. <laughs> Won't you have one of my cigarettes? Yes, you're quite right. It isn't mine. To use a popular expression, I pinched it. You must come up and see my collection. Aren't you very afraid of the police? No, but I don't care to meet them socially. As a class, they bore me. You see, Miss Summers, I'm one of those people who, shall we say, live on their wits. My wits are very sharp. I advise you very strongly to think twice before cutting yourself on them. Of course, you're like all blackmailers. My dear Miss Summers, what a very ugly word. You've quite shocked me. You're like them all. One has only to stand firm and you're helpless. You're playing a game of bluff and you know it. Go on. If you don't clear out of this room in two minutes, with the promise that Frank will never see you again, I'll go out and ring up Scotland Yard. Go on. You've been to prison yourself once. I'm 25 years old, Miss Summers, and I've been to prison four or five times. I really can't remember which. You see, I'm a wrong and by nature, and I'm not really happy unless I'm up to what the governor used to call my tricks. Uh, my father, a charming old gentleman, you'd have liked him enormously. Then I'll go to him. Well, unfortunately, you see, he's not accessible at the moment, owing to not having quite finished serving a life sentence. Won't you really smoke? Yeah. Now, look here, Mr. Blake. Yes? If I go to the police... Yes? ...and tell them that you're blackmailing Frank, think what you've got to lose. I have nothing to lose. Well, so I'm standing there minding my own business, see? Mr. Chief. Oh, for Pete's sake, Chief, we don't want him to see you hanging around here. You better scram. All right, all right. We got ten minutes yet. Oh, yeah? Now I'll get a taxi, go to your hotel, and hang around there till you get him in your room. Then everything will be fine and dandy, Chief. See you later, boys. Okay. So long, Chief. So I said to this guy, I said, brother, oh, don't yeah. get me in any argument because I know all the answers. Yeah. You know, my wife will be wondering where I am. Honey, there's, there's no reply. I tell you what, she's out. My wife's at home waiting for her husband. 
She must be at home. I tell you what, she's ill. The old nonsense. The line's out of order. Good night. Norman, eh? uh, that note you gave me to deliver this morning. What of it? Will it make a very big difference to you? Eh? Financially, I mean. Oh. A bigger difference than you can realize. Oh. You know, the minute I saw you, I said to myself, I said, now that's a man, what you can call a man. You, uh, you were rather exaggerating, I'm afraid. Well, Ralph, you're wonderful. Oh, oh you, you really think so? Mm. Well, I... Uh, manners. <laughs> <laughs> That's that old tawny port. <laughs> what will your wife say? <laughs> my wife? Oh, my wife can go to, uh, to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are awful. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of you out of in your eyes, did you know? No. No, I oh. didn't. Oh, there is. I feel any moment now if I wasn't careful. You might put your arm around my waist. Oh, might I? Mm -hmm. Well, I never thought of that quite. Mm -hmm. There. I knew you would, you bold creature. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but me to put mine around you. Oh, really, you mustn't do that. Oh, yes, I must. It's going too far. <laughs> oh, please. Come on, little night. Merry and bright. Oh, sweet pup. Over the top. Well, that, that, thank God. All I need now to put me right would be a nice long country walk. Oh, Lord. Oh, I shan't want you till the morning. You're very good, sir. Do you think the gentleman may fancy a cigar, sir? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, I want to go to Wimbledon Common. Yes, yes, my name. Oh. Oh, I've left my keys inside. And I've only got a shilling. Oh, calm me down, can it? But I must get to Wimbledon Common. Well, you might get a bus around the corner, lady. Oh. Get him off first, please. Hold tight. Here's please. Here's please. Wimbledon Common, please. Uh, which end, ma'am? Uh, has it got more than one end? Well, it's not what you might call an allotment, you know. Uh, I'm going to miss my last bus if I'm not careful. Here, old chap. Might ring up the supervisor for me, will you? Right, what about your flowers? I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow now. Good night. Good night, old chap. Get off first, please. Tommy Road. Hurry to the corner. Bus behind, 34. Take your father down. Well, I'm in a hurry. I'll take this one. All right. Hold time. Four. I'm sorry I'm late, boys. I've been to see the wife's sister. It's a very sad case. Ah, uh -huh. was it there? Gave you that promising bottle of scotch, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what about a taxi up to the hotel, huh? Now, look, if you guys want to take me for a ride, do you mind if we go in a bus? Sure, Ooh, that's go. all right. Come Let's on. go. Ready, Lee? Get them off first, please. Hurry along, there, please. Oh. Nice day for ducks. Why? Mind the step. Hail, please. Hail, please. Three pennies. Have you got change for a fiver? Fiver. Say, buddy, can you spare three dimes? I'd laugh if you brought a grammar book. Ha ha, if I know. Hello? Yes? Miss Adams, Mr. Nichols on the phone asking if you've left yet. Says he's expecting you. Oh. Sam, I'm on my way. She's on her way, sir. 
Let him off first, please. Hurry along, man. Hold tight. Healthy. Oh, what do I get off for? Linden Gardens. I'll put you off, miss. Tuppence. You? Would you mind giving me a cheque for a hundred pounds? Now? He hasn't got a hundred pounds. Yes, he has. He's got two hundred. Well, that's very nice of you. Thank God we're never to see you again. Well, you never can tell, you know. I mean, what is the expression? Something about a bad penny, is How it? can you stand there and say such? My dear Miss Summers, I was educated at a very nasty little school, but I have never yet been known not to behave quite beautifully. Oh, thank you so much. That's very nice of you. Very pleased to have met you both. Goodbye. What did he mean about the bad penny? It means he's coming back for more. They always come back. Oh, thank what are we to do? Hurry on, Debbie. Okay. Oh. Be up Well? Well, don't you know this is a park? Oh, a lady friend of mine got out after doing a lot less. God bless my soul. Oh, the way you've led me on to. Look here, we'd better run for it. You go that way, I go this way. Oh, uh, this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Well, how did you make out? I don't know, all this. Oh, not so bad. Oh, well, run, Lord Burley. Thank you. Hey, Arthur, maybe we're not camping out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't Ready yet, Mark? I'm going. Give me two tickets to King's Cross, young man. Sorry, ma'am, can't be done. I'm going to King's Cross now. That's clever of you, because this bus ain't. That's a man in uniform told me to take a number 134, so it must be the right bus. It is, Mum. The only thing against it is it's going the other way. You've made me miss my last excursion train to Lincoln. Would you mind pressing your belt, please? Come along, Ruth. Give Auntie your umbrella. Well, this is the end of a perfect day, and no mistake. I've been robbed. Well, what are you going to do about it? Write me a check? Oh, dear. What can I do? Allow me. Oh. Looks nice ship for a cruiser. Yes, doesn't she? Yes. Haven't told the wife we're going yet. Be a surprise for her. She'll enjoy that. I bet she will. Art. If there's one thing I know anything about, it's art. As my poor old mother used to say, Joe, you shouldn't be in the market. You should be in the museum. You'll be here in ten minutes. Sure. Sounds a slippery customer, sir. We've got him this time. Got him beautifully. Pick it out, I can smell it. I'm a whippet. Sure. You won't forget to put me up at Linden Gardens, will you? But are you sure she's not in? Sure, Mr. Dawes. This is late for her, too. Did you miss her at the stage door? Well, as a matter of fact, Mrs. Lomas, we had a bit of a tip.
was was suspicious. Superstitious. Yes. And I'm inclined to agree, Friday the 13th was unlucky. Unlucky? <laughs> you said it. It's no use. You can't fit the Emperor of China's head on the Marie Antoinette bust. Oh, it's a washout, Chief. The thing must be powder by now. Oh, damn. Is it looking for something? I'll catch you yet. Why pick on me? A lad has never done any harm to anybody, and I always remember my mother's words. It's far better to be a coward than die young. Safe and sound, Joe? I'm all right, except when I broke something in there which I valued very much. And what was that? A bottle of scotch. But don't let that worry you. Sticks and stones might break my bones, but bad names will never hurt me. Put a poultice on that. It slipped my memory. I was on my way to Mr. Cranheimer's in that bus. Uh, yes, yes, Cranheimer. I, I know they've fallen considerably, but... Uh, uh, huh? No, 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 no. A misunderstanding. I, um, I reconsidered my decision. Yes, yes, goodbye. Does that mean I've saved you a pretty penny? Yes, it does. Oh, I am glad, dear. Flora, where's the marmalade? Martha, where's the marmalade? I told you he'd run out and mum and asked you to order some yesterday. I'm so sorry, darling. I'm afraid I must have forgotten to order the marmalade. Forget, forget. You'd forget your head if it wasn't screwed on tight. You'd, you... You... Oh, you... <laughs> <laughs> Put these in the window, sir. No, send them round to the widow with this card. With heartfelt sympathy in your irreparable loss. No, 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 my ducky darling. No, 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 dear, no. Drink it for Mumsy. No, dear, the pain's in the head. The police. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Uh, I don't know anything about the accident, Inspector. I, I don't remember anything. It, it was all dark, and, and then I was at home. I don't want to speak to you about the accident, sir. I want to speak to you about the park. You suffered a loss. Oh, I don't remember anything about it. Uh, I'm still dazed. You suffered a loss in the park? Uh, no, no, I, I didn't lose anything. Oh, yes, he lost his dog. He's down at the station now. Oh, oh Ralph, do you mean to say you left Pook in the park? Yes, they are. But, Ralph, are you mad? Don't you know the park's the most dangerous place in London for a dog? You are telling me. That row was my fault. It was my jealousy. No, it was my temper. I've been thinking, if you want to go on with your career... Now, how can I be God's gift to non-stop with a sprained ankle? Please, sir, will you kiss me? By the way, dear, I've been thinking. That bus was going the other way. Where were you going to that time of night? Oh, to see a maiden aunt of mine in Kensington. But you've never seen her before? No, dear. I don't think I'll ever see her now. And so loves a man he or she loves. <laughs> Darling. Come. See you alone for a minute. I haven't slept all night. Well, I'll hit the run again soon. Either that or I'll be sacked. The best thing for you would be never to see me again. Are you Mr. Francis Parsons? Yes. Did you give a fellow a check yesterday? Yes, Blake. He was killed late last night in a bus smash. He was no stranger to the force, you know. Was he bothering you? Well, a good riddance, I say. Good morning, miss. Good morning, sir. Auntie, I'd like to stay in a bed and breakfast every night. Yes, no. Well, I didn't know that bus we got off last night went on a bit further and was hit on the top of that train. Here's a picture. Ooh, I wish I'd have been there. 
Auntie. Yes, sir. If we hadn't have got off that bus, it'd have passed the place where the crane fell before the crane fell, wouldn't it, Auntie? Yes, sir. And then there wouldn't have been an accident, would there, Auntie? Mm, so I wouldn't, sir.